Okay, so again, Jim, we're here for NAM 2019. Absolutely Gibson right. US. We're, it's a very exciting show for us. We yeah. have new leadership. It's a whole new company. We put a lot of effort in all the products that we're showing here this year. Yeah. It's our most impressive exhibit that we have ever, have ever shown at NAM. And with Gibson USA, I want to show you how we took the line and we reconfigured it. We divided it between a classic series of the line and a contemporary series. That way, our historic models are, are bracketed in a way that are true to form to the 50s and 60s era's appointments that our fans expect. And then we have contemporary versions of our iconic models that have modern features that younger uh, or, or other players may be more receptive to. This way it's it's not going to offend anybody. You know, we have something for everybody. Okay. So, okay. Starting so let's with, start with Les Paul Standard. Yeah, the Les Paul Standard now in the Classic Series has all the features and appointments starting with the Les Paul Standard 50s. It has the 50s round neck profile, thin binding, rosewood fingerboard, mahogany neck, and mahogany body with a double A figured maple top. We have burst bucker one and two pickups, aluminum stop bar tailpiece with steel studs, ABR tunematic bridge, hand wired controls with orange drop capacitors. Oh, what, any, any weight relief in there? No weight relief at all. Solid at all. So this is true to form to yeah. the 50s. Yeah. So uh, this has all those features that you would expect in a Les Paul standard from that era. We also have it in a gold top as well as tobacco, and uh, we have a 50s Les Paul that uh, is also available with the P90s, which of course is the predecessor to the Les Paul uh, model that we know and love with the humbuckers, right? So this would have been like the 56 era with the Tunematic and uh, the P90s. No weight relieving again, so it's solid mahogany, very substantial and, and iconic. Next, we have the Les Paul Standard 60s. This would have the features that you would expect in the 1960 model year of Les Paul, the final model year of production. Yeah. So it has the slim taper neck that many players think is a really fast feel, uh, similar to Jimmy Page's that he played, yeah. right? It has you know the thin binding rounded over, so it's a really comfortable feel on the neck. Uh, again, solid mahogany, no weight relieving at all, double A figured top. Stop bar is aluminum, uh, just like in the 50s, with steel studs, ABR, tunematic. Again, hand-wired controls, and all of the Gibson guitars, not only in our classic series, but in our contemporary, all feature 500K vintage audio taper pots. So it's a smoother audio taper than modern audio taper pots, yeah. and uh, we had original pots that we measured and replicated, and CTS, our manufacturer, were, were able to duplicate that spec. So everything is true to form, 50 spec standards. And then orange drop capacitors. So uh, that again is the uh, Les Paul Standard 60s. We also have the Grover tuners that they were using in the 60s. So this is uh, the same thing. We have the, the bourbon verse burst finish, uh, which is this color, and uh, this one is actually the iced tea. And then we also uh, make it in... I know that would be it for the 60s, those two colors. Yeah. What a nice guitar. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, also in the Les Paul line, in the classic lineup, we reintroduced the Les Paul Special and the Les Paul Junior. Here you're holding the Les Paul Standard, which would be kind of the 57 version of that. So it has the classic wraparound, uh, two P90 pickups, solid slab mahogany body in the TV uh, yellow finish, and uh, rosewood fingerboard, white button vintage style tuners, and again, uh, hand-wired controls with the 50s vintage taper pots. The Les Paul Jr., uh, similar things with the slab body, uh, all mahogany, and the vintage uh, TV sunburst, single volume, single tone, hand-wired, wrap-around uh, stop tailpiece, and a single dog ear P90. So it's just a rock and roll machine. So much uh, great rock and roll was just cut on those juniors. You know, yeah. everyone loves them, and uh, they're just a rock solid utilitarian guitar. Next, we have the SG lineup. In the SG lineup, we start with the SG Standard 61. 
This was done in the, the 61 style of SG that was actually called the Les Paul model. Yeah. Initially, they called it the Les Paul, and then Les Paul had a change of heart, and he didn't really want to get on board with it. He was going through a divorce, and that kind of complicated things. So a year or two later, we rechristened it the SG for solid body guitar. Here, for simplicity in our lineup, we refer to it as the SG Standard 61. We have two burst bucker 61 humbuckers in there. In 61, that was also the year we transitioned to Alnico 5 magnets. So they're a burst bucker wound pickup, which, which have offset coils, and then the Alnico 5 makes the, the humbucker a little bit louder and prouder because of the stronger magnetism. Still a great burst bucker voice. And, and the Alnico 5 in the SG allows it to have a little bit more edge and cut and clarity. Next we have the SG Standard 61 with the Maestro Vibrola tailpiece. Same exact guitar except with the Maestro Vibrola tailpiece. It has the vintage scarfing on the body, the vintage 22 fret neck joint, and all the other appointments that the 61 would have. So cool. Next we have the SG Standard 61 with the sideways Maestro Vibrola. So this was a, a vibrato that they only used for a year or so. So it just has that sideways action and the unique look. And a lot of players like them, uh, you know, because they're so quirky and they just have really cool looks. You know, a lot of players will like them. They don't even use the vibrato, you know, <laughs> but they just love them. So uh, we every bridge is sounding different. Yeah. Yeah. Every bridge here. I mean, yeah, the they do. Is sounding different than to the stop tailpiece. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And. Uh, We've re we re-engineered this so it works better and, and stays in tune better than the original. However, we have to admit it's still a quirky kind of design. So uh, that's the deal with the uh, vintage uh, Maestro Vibrola tail piece. Next in the SG lineup. It's a unique color, is it? Yes, that's sparkling yeah. burgundy. And Gibson, that was one of their custom colors back then. So we reintroduced the sparkling burgundy and uh, the faded Pelham blue on the, uh, or actually, yeah, faded Pelham. So the faded Pelham is a little more antiqued, not quite as bright as the new version. So it has a slight antiquing to it. It has all the standard appointments that you would expect from that early 60s first issue of the SG Special. The wraparound with the compensation, the uh, two P90s, hand-wired controls, the 22 fret neck joint, small pick guard, and the very sharp contours. Slim taper necks on all of the yeah. early 60s versions SGs, so it's a very fast uh, feel. Lastly, we have uh, in the SG, we go to the SG Junior, also that last in the early 60s version, the dog ear, single pickup, wrap around, hand wired controls, the 22 fret neck joint, and the vintage scarfing. Uh, a slim taper neck joint, it's just a very sexy, simple guitar. Yeah. And then the very last in the SG lineup is actually on the other side. And uh, we have the SG Standard, which is the later 60s version of the yeah. SG. And if we want to walk over there, we can see that. So here, uh, as I said earlier, you know, the later 60s SG Standard at that point evolved into the full face pit guard. Uh, it's just an iconic look and design. And, uh, and it also kind of affects the performance of the guitar. When, get, when the pickups are in mounting rings, they sit parallel to the strings. When they're in a pick guard, they sit kind of at a slant, so they typically have a little bit brighter edge to them. Uh, Tony Iommi was known for playing that era SG for a lot of years, as well as Angus Young. So uh, it's pretty much divided half and half with our fans on which version they prefer, either the later 60s or the early 60s with the small guard. But you do both now. But we do both. <laughs> and, uh, and also, one notable feature in the later 60s, the neck shape has the rounded profile. Yeah. So it has a little bit more girth, and it has the 19 fret neck joint. So it's a little bit longer joint. You can still get total access to the 22nd fret, but a lot of players feel that extra material just makes it sound a little bit different, and it moves the strap button up a little closer to the headstock, which they feel makes it balanced a little bit yeah. different. So uh, that would complete the uh, classic lineup with all our guitars.